Hi everyone, I hope you all are having a wonderful time. Today I'm going to share my experience of using this Yamaha Network Receiver R-N1000. So this one retail for $1800 and it has built-in Yamaha Music Cast streaming. It can use pretty much every music streaming services excluding Apple Music, right? That's going to be only on AirPlay. One of my favorite features is DSD via UPnP playback is possible directly playing from my Sony Music server controlling through this Yamaha app. So that is one of my favorite feature of this network receiver. So overall retail price is pretty high side given the way that they built, right? Because the build quality, I mean, for the $1,800, it should be a bit better, especially the speaker binding posts are very flimsy. Let's put it this way. If you compare this binding post to such as a VM amp, speaker binding post. This one is too plasticky and flimsy, so I'm not big fan at all. And also the rear panel is so thin that if I put in uh, my heavy gauge speaker wires, surprisingly it moves. The top cover is thin sheet of a pressed metal sheet. It should be better for the price that they are selling $1,800 and it rated for 100 watts at 8 ohm load and 6 ohm load is only 120 watts. They don't have specified rating for 4 ohm load. When I try with CSS Audio to DDX towers, it was sloppy and lacking in bass control. Then when I try with KLH Model 3, Again, the bass control is not great. Sound staging, stereo image, and depth is about average. So when I was using this RN1000 in my streaming setup and watching Netflix or streaming movies, and I find it to be pretty nice, especially when you pair with subwoofer because I crossed it over and I adjust it. So using YPAO, so Yamaha parametric in-room equalizer, it comes with little microphone. But if you want pure two-channel listening experience, quality of the sound is not up to uh, the asking price, I should say, because it's kind of lacking in resolution and detail, especially uh, separation between the notes because the internal deck that come with it, it has a ESS9080Q chip inside. Best feature of it is very convenient to use. Everything works perfectly as intended for those features only come down to sound quality and build quality because will it worth $1,800 of the asking price, right? That is the main question that everyone will be asking. If you don't need of an internet streamer or YPAO features or anything that they have in here, you should stick to like AS801 or AS series. So I started off with streaming music using just internet streamer of this RN1000 receiver, listening to Spotify or Tidal or Amazon Music. It sounded okay. Nothing really stand out or special or that sort. And then I try USB cable connected from my Sony HAP Z1 ES music server to this RN1000. I listen to it again, play Spotify through that Sony music server and sounded much better. Better resolution and better, uh, let's say, gain is even louder. So a few D, probably like three to five dB louder than the internet streamer and the clearer and cleaner. Because of the gain is different, I volume match it and I listen it to it again, not comparable. So internet streamer built inside this uh, RN1000 is weakest link in my opinion, more so than the deck inside. So then I switch it over to UPnP playback. 
using Yamaha Music Cast app and listen to it again. It has slightly better in noise control and slightly darker in background noise and much quieter. So those are three different sound quality. The loudness and gain and resolution is about the same as the USB output or input that using in this RM1000. So I wasn't expecting that from Yamaha. So that is uh, one of the biggest surprise using this RM1000. The sound quality variation between three different features and listening to very same music. For the internet connection, I'm using ethernet cable directly connected to Gunstart N18 Pro network switch and Oya Ida USB cable directly connected from my Sony Music server. And I end up preferring UPnP playback for a bit quieter background compared to USB with this RM1000A. So I listen to it and overall the sound is, I mean, slightly congested. As I mentioned before, when I connect my uh, Mogami reference cable, which is pretty thick, right? So like the flimsy rear panel and binding post really let me down. And then sound is not that great either because those heavy gauge cable doesn't I don't know why it's not working well with this it sounds congested so I removed that Mogami W3104 and I changed it to Mogami W3082 uh, shielded cable and it opens up and give me a bit better resolution and more detail compared to the Mogami uh, quad cable. So that's where the difference is using those two different cables. And I keep on using this Mogami W3082 because it has better resolution. And for the sound quality, I will start from bass quality, right? Bass is nice and pronounced, but not really taut or articulated kind of uh, notes that you will hear it back. It's kind of a bit loose and not enough control. Separation between the notes are not much noticeable. It's kind of congested feeling to it. So upper bass to mid-range the transition area, right? Those area as well congested. I wasn't enjoying it. The upper mid-range and mid-range slight warmness to it in that region. Also lacking the uh, overall resolution. That's the uh, internet DAC is making it because as soon as I switch it to this SMS SUX, I listen it again and it totally different sound open and airy and very spacious sound that it can produce. The amplifier itself is very good in terms of a sound reproduction. The internal music streamer and DAC is lacking behind in sound quality wise. The amplifier itself may not have enough power too, but it's okay, right, if you don't play too loud. In my system, I was able to take it up to 95, 98 dB range. But as soon as you pass 88, it start getting thinner and thinner and not enjoyable in sound quality itself is. So if you don't play loud, if your room is not too big, and if you want a normal music listening level around like 65 to 80 dB range, it should do well regardless of uh, speaker impedance. And by the way, this room is 26 by 16, so it's about mid-sized room. I don't use tone control at all, and I play around with loudness a little bit. It's okay, usually I don't like to use loudness in general. Sound staging and depth and width and scale that it can produce and project into your room is pretty decent, especially the depth is pretty good. But the width and the skill and dynamic sound that really opens up and give you like a realistic feeling sound stage is not there. So that is a little lacking behind. In terms of higher frequency range, it's okay. It has a nice amount of space and separation. If I'm gonna spend $1,800, I would rather buy like a $1,000 range of uh, 
two channel Yamaha integrated amplifier and I will use my own streaming DAC or you know that will be much better sounding in general. So but speaker pairing right I kind of like it pairing with Pioneer TED S1E8 speakers because it gives me more depth and width than other pairing but this amplifier is not capable of delivering good control and like power to lower sensitive speakers so I will stick above 88 dB range to get max performance out of this RM1000A. So overall everything combined this one is I mean it's okay to have if you want to use it as a background music or just to get the music going in the back and you know forget about everything else but if you are really serious about high quality streaming or if you're really serious about hi-fi sound quality you should look for something else because for the price and sound quality that we are getting with this RM1000A is uh, three and a half stars for me so that's about it. I'm really big fan of a Yamaha AS series especially the higher price range for the price of $1800 is kind of steep for what we can get so a few things that I like about using this RM1000A is easy of using the app control everything through Yamaha app and you can select any streaming services that they have built in there and gain control input selector everything works great I don't even bother using included remote control this front panel is kind of uh, nice especially if you're using UPnP playback if you are playing Spotify or Tidal I don't think it display uh, song information I think it's only display either USB or UPnP playback it will be scrolling uh, music information in this bottom area of the panel so that's a very neat feature I kind of like it I can see the uh, scrolling letter there that's a very nice feature so that's it my friend that is my experience that I like to share with you thank you for watching and happy listening next one is it's called kiss of life and let's hear some bass
grade on the bass, Mr. Ponyboy Keskesan. On the guitar, Autumn Ayoskesan. 